What is happening YouTube? It's your homie S. Akuma coming back to you with another video. In today's video, you guessed it, it's the finals of the Glassboro New Jersey uh, Energon Invitational Qualifier. And in the finals we have to the left, affiliated with Vector Sigma, Brian Klein playing Specialist Shockwave featuring uh, Skydive, Dinobot Swoop, and uh, Major Shockwave himself. All three of his characters are specialists, so they're able to wear a lot of the upgrades in the deck. And uh, over to the right, we have Wrecking Rules Joe B playing his Anticipation cards. Very powerful deck. We just saw last um, video how explosive it can be with the Anticipation engine. Now, despite the ruling being changed, keep in mind, the, excuse me, the ruling being changed currently now, keep in mind that, uh, you know, we didn't know before this uh, tournament. So, going to play it as is. But let's see how many times Joe cheats in this game. <laughs> All right, so we got Shockwave flipping for the first turn and setting a secret action right out the gate, off the bet or um, off the top of the deck. Uh, what's nice I like about this version versus like the version I played with Flame War is you don't have to waste the flip. You don't have to waste a flip on Flame War. You get to flip Shockwave immediately. So right on turn two, you can get to trying to take apart your opponent's hand and leave them with less options. Now, Joe's deck naturally kind of uh, counters major shockwave because cliff jumper lets him draw cards for free bumblebee lets him get a plus one when he discards an action to draw two cards so and then prowl's gonna let him draw another card right here too so i don't know how much brian's going to focus on discarding um joe's hand this game uh security checkpoint will be a key factor as well security checkpoint will strip a lot of cards out of joe's hand you know barring that you know how many other upgrades he has in his hand and then dwindle down on the, the rest of his hand so Joe gets the very ideal turn for uh, cars on turn two. Start your engines, but he flipped Prowl first. So what Prowl's gonna do is give Bolt 2 to all of his cars. And uh, so B's going to potentially be attacking in the mode that he doesn't want to be in, but it potentially might be okay. All right, so that was interesting. So Joe played uh, Start your engines for his turn, his blue action, but when B flipped back to alt mode he was able to activate another action which was all out of tax joe kind of hesitated as you can see and sure enough the uh set card was infiltrate so brian made the right move by setting it so we're gonna have cliff jumper still attack pretty strong with a uh, bull two nine bull two into skydive killing the skydive brian's deck being predominantly mixed i don't think that their deck list played any double blues at all so um, it, it, it's kind of fragile but it also is kind of explosive on the things that it's capable of doing capable of doing so skydive just soaks up a hit and um is out of there on its first defend which is kind of unfortunate it'd have been nice if it lived but i mean as you can see brian's flips were like mixed and not a lot of blue there so didn't decide to get the smelt So he's going to play the Scrounds. He knows what card is on top of his deck, so he's going to be able to flip Energon Axe and equip the Energon Axe on the Swoop. Swoop having damage will trigger the Energon Axe. He's going to flip Major Shockwave and draw a card So, and make Joe discard a card. Doesn't really hurt Joe too much right now, being that he has four-ish cards in hand. So he played an action. He still has an upgrade to play because the Scrounge was his action to get an upgrade, but he's also able to play an upgrade. Doesn't look like he has one, unfortunately, though. He's going to attack with uh, was that seven pierce two into the cliff jumper. Cliff jumper takes five. Of course, guys, keep in mind that what makes cards so powerful are their untap effects. That is the sole reason why the, the deck is so good and definitely a tier one deck. So if Joe has another untap effect here, it could really be bad for a uh, major shockwave going into that next turn. So Joe's going to use his flip on Prowl and draw a card for Cliff Jumper. Again, such a natural counter to Major Shockwave. We got Turbo Boosters, just what I was talking about. You know, he's drawing so many cards there. He definitely very easy to find one of your six untap effects. Well, I take that back. Uh, he already used one, so one of five untap effects. So he's going to play the Turbo Booster. Uh, Turbo Booster is so good on Cliff Jumper because he doesn't flip till late game. So he's always ready to. Sometimes it's awkward with B, like you have to flip B to alt mode and then use Turbo Booster on it. And then send one of your other characters in because usually you don't want to attack with B in his alt mode. Joe's deck's a little different. Sometimes he will actually attack with B in alt mode. But we're going to play Supercharge this turn and go in on Swoop. Flipping a solid amount of damage. Looks like about 9 damage going into Swoop. Swoop's going to block for 4 and take 5. And he is also KO'd. Jeez. Not giving Brian any room to breathe right here. It takes a minute for Shockwave to set up and the card deck is just too fast. 
Pun intended. Cars too fast, too fast, too furious. I know that was cheesy. Don't clown me. <laughs> so Shockwave has a lot of work to do. And um, unfortunately, just looking at this right now, I think grenade launchers, the only way that he can KO the Prowl, like right off the bat, right off the bat, it's the only way. Because unfortunately, he wasn't able to load him up. As you can see, his uh, major shockwave is uh, pretty naked there with no upgrades on it. You know, this deck gets very, uh, the strong. This deck gets stronger with the more upgrades you know he has loaded up on him. You know, energy pack, sturdy armor, etc. So again, just takes a minute to set up. Now that was a decent card to get actually. And okay, so that's what I was just talking about. So we got twelve going into the prowl. So we have W five gyro blaster and grenade launcher. Now W five gyro blaster. Remember, it is a no icon card. Um, it gets plus one attack, and it's a utility, most importantly. And um, either neither player can flip more than two cards uh, when battling. So, gotta have twelve going to the prowl. But unfortunately, gotta take two. That grenade launcher should be uh, knocked off here, but I'm pretty sure they'll remember here soon. So Brian again, not able to get set up. Not really any room to breathe right now to try to control Brian uh, Joe's hand. Again, security checkpoint would have been really good, but he needs to see it early. Otherwise, it just might be, you know, might be too much. Press the advantage. That's, oh, my goodness. Okay. Yep. One of the best cards in Wave 2, press the advantage. Coming at Shockwave, putting him at zero defense. Both players can only flip two cards, but definitely going to take a solid amount of damage there. And then B is going to, I'm sure, discard a card and draw two. Yep, pitches all out of tax. Not as good here anymore with the way the turn sequencing goes. So at face value, his uh, flips didn't help him at all, but he still is attacking for 12 into Shockwave's one because the minus two defense from the press the advantage lasts till the end of the turn. There are a couple of things that could have just made press the advantage not as big of a deal. It could have not had a green icon. It could have just said, you know, minus two defense for the next attack, not till the end of the turn, you know, a couple things. So I'm just really hoping that as much as I love Autobots, I do like to play all types of characters, including Decepticons. And every time, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of you guys listening to this, anytime we go to build a Decepticon deck, it's like, oh, but press the advantage. So I'm hoping we get some type of card to help combat it. Not necessarily even an equivalent, just an unfair card in Decepticon's favor to help battle against the Autobots. So we can play a Decepticon deck and not say, oh, PTA. Yeah, well, not playing it. <laughs> so I can't tell how much damage Shockwave has on it, but he definitely has to get a kill this turn. If he doesn't, taking another two attacks is definitely going to be the end of this game. Also keep in mind, by the way, Brian automatically gets his invite because uh, there's a pass down system that works with WOTC and all their games. So uh, Joe B got his invite from Top 32 ing at uh, Gen Con a couple a month or so ago. So he already has his invite, which means that it'll pass to uh, the second place finisher. So Brian already has his invite. These guys are just playing for bragging rights. These guys are just playing for, I guess, the the better prize support because they did not agree to split before the finals, if I recall correctly. So just playing for the uh, title of the uh, store champion, I guess. We're gonna play Reclaim here. We're gonna stack Grenade Launcher on top of the deck. Now Shockwave can only play Decepticon cards or and or oh, excuse me, yeah, Decepticon cards or Secret Actions off the top of the deck or um yeah. So he has to flip, which is still just fine. He's still attacking with 11, and he's gonna attack with 11 into Cliff Jumper. Eleven and a cliff jumper, yeah. Unfortunately, with that math, it wouldn't have killed the B if he would attack the B. Eleven minus the one defense is uh, ten, and it would leave the B at one, thus letting him attack twice. So, even if B doesn't die this turn, as you can see, so the grenade launcher from last turn wouldn't have killed the B. So Brian would need another grenade launcher plus something like a bigger they are or something, which I, which I don't think he's playing. And a one shot stand, I don't think would help because his health would just be too low. Um, in order to kill that B next turn, if he even survives this turn. And doesn't look like he's going to. We gotta press the advantage. Okay, Joe's just going in. <laughs> we gotta press the advantage and then flip B to alt mode to play another press the advantage. So it's gonna be minus four defense. So after all of Brian's flips, if he were to flip two security checkpoints, it would take all all, all four of those would would not would not matter. And 
I totally butchered saying that. You guys know what I meant. So the minus two defense accumulates at the end of combat. So his two security checkpoints that he would have flipped would literally mean nothing. And he would just have his two defense versus Bumblebee's, was that, 10 or so? 9, 10? Before flips? So yeah, easy way to do it is when you flip a whole bunch of cards for your blues, if, if you have two defense, just take away that two defense and just discount your flips if you uh, ended up getting pressed the advantage that turn. So that first game took about 10 minutes. Uh, Joe's ready to go. He has no side deck ready for this deck. Doesn't seem like he needs one. That I mean, this, um, that matchup did not take that long. So time's not really a factor. We're kind of easy going at this point. I think Brian... I feel like Joe. Yeah, Joe got is a higher seed than Brian, I want to say. So at the beginning of the game, uh, Joe was able to pick that he wanted to go first or not. So that was also a big deal, too. I want to say. I'm not 100% sure. But just keep in mind, at the comic book store tournaments, and only at these tournaments they do this, which is fine. Because I think they run this, their magic tournaments like this, is... um. Whatever place you were after Swiss going into the top cut, you were able to choose who goes first or second in your game. So if one plays eight, two plays seven, and then we have uh, three playing six, third seed playing the sixth seed, the third seed will get to pick who goes first. And obviously, you know, the first seed will be able to pick who goes first throughout the in the rest of the duration of the uh, top cut. So getting first place after Swiss is actually a big deal in that sense because you don't have to worry about a dice roll, especially if you want to go first. So if you're playing cars, you know, in your first after Swiss, you're just really on a really good run because you go first easily, you know, every one of your games. As long as you're still in. Every one of your game ones anyway. You don't get to pick who goes first for game one, two, and three. Just the start of the match. So. So, I want to say, oh no, Brian. Wow. Okay, so Brian lost. Nobody decided to deck any characters. And Brian actually decided to go second, which is very interesting. And then, you know what, Joe didn't even decide to attack Shockwave first turn last game. He decided to attack Swoop, which it only took two attacks to kill the Swoop then, too. So, let's see if Joe goes with the same line of play from last game. Brian's going to flip some cards. Flips two blues, two infiltrates, though. So, flipping those early lets Joe know that it's very unlikely that he will have one later on for uh, Shockwave. Less likely, rather. Got to trade a UFO for a scrounge. He's going to draw for turn. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking, like, Brian didn't go first game one either. Yeah, he decided to go second again. Don't think that was a uh, thing. I think he should have went first, to be honest with you. Hide his shockwave for as long as possible. Sit in the skydive in. Let him soak an attack. But uh, we'll see how this pans out. Because it's not like... Like, it, normally in three-on-three -three matchups, if you go second, you get to get an attack at their biggest character first. But with the cars, that just ta changes that entire dynamic because of their untap effects. So, just going to put three damage on Shockwave and send Skydive into B. So he didn't put the three damage on uh, one or the one shot stand damage on skydive because I'm assuming that he would like it to live this time around, unlike last game. At least live for one attack. He does his job if he at least soaks the two attacks. So not unless you know Joe has a big attack and leaves the skydive at one and then has a zap to just get rid of it. But we'll see how it pans out. Joe's thinking. No start your engines or untap effect this game, looks like. But he does have rollout. So rollout will give all of his characters bowl two. He's also going to play another action for his turn uh, because of B's all mode effect. When you flip to this mode, you may play another action. So he's going to play incoming transmission. Him deciding between two cards in his hand seems like he doesn't have a double orange to stack, potentially. Because that would usually... Oh, okay. So he's setting up for anticipation engine. So there's that zap. He's going to zap uh, Shockwave, putting four damage on him total. And he's going to attack into the Skydive for a seven. A uh, decent seven. And Shockwave's definitely going to live this attack. Block it for at least four, I want to say. Can't tell what that last card was off screen, unfortunately. But 
So not a huge turn from Joe this turn. That bold really did nothing for him. He got to give him plus two attack. But uh, so that's pretty good for Brian. So let's see what ends up happening. So Brian has the option of flipping swoop this turn and uh, or excuse me, flipping shockwave, take a card out of Joe's hand. Now keep in mind, it's really not hurting Joe at this point because every time he flips, which he's ready to do next turn with B or uh, Prowl, and you know just draw a card for free off of Cliff Jumper. So such a hard counter, naturally. <laughs> Gonna play the scrounge. He knows the cards on top of his deck. It is a gamma launcher. Now that's very interesting that he did that. I feel like he may have forgotten that um, Shockwave can play Decepticon cards, which gamma launcher is for free. So he could just play it off the top and then save that scrounge for another upgrade, uh, potentially you know down the line. So not sure he realized that or not, but that is a thing. So. Because that's technically a potentially a waste of a scrounge, but let's see what ends up happening. If that is an, if that's a Decepticon action on top of his deck or a secret action, he could just play that off the top of his self or itself as well, and uh, then he won't have to. Okay, well I apologize. Okay, so I didn't realize his hand. So okay, so he played the scrounge to play an upgrade for the turn. So he played his action to play an upgrade, but then he still has his upgrade play to potentially play something. So he's loading up the shockwave to get some. Um, you know, to get him loaded up a little bit. So he'll have, he's a 9-3 right now, which is pretty strong. And he's going to use Plasma Burst on the uh, B. So that's why he did that. Okay. At first glance, like I said, I didn't know his hand. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, face value with the uh, field here. So that was a solid play. What I do like about uh, their deck not playing any double blues is like a, a lot of times, usually when you flip Shockwave, it's almost probably always a card that you want to draw, that you don't mind drawing. Okay, so Brian's going to send in Shockwave here to kill the B to kind of turn off some of Joe's effects. And um, I did see a glimpse of Callous leadership in um, Brian's hand, so that's why he did that, because he knows that Shockwave will most likely live this Prowl attack. And even if he untapped Cliff Jumper and attacked with Cliff Jumper, and then be able to callous leadership and move damage from him over to another character. So soak up some damage. But there's gonna be a lot of damage here. We got a grenade launcher press the advantage, which is pretty much like a double grenade launcher onto onto Prowl going in as Shockwave. Not that good of a flip, but did he at least he did flip one orange. So it's about six, ten attack. And shockwave, I'm not sure what the shockwave is at, but it's definitely a good chunk of health. Shockwave blocking with three, so he took seven. Uh, looking at the dice, squinting at it, looks like about a 12. So Brian's not in a horrible position Horrible position here right now. Can't tell how many cards Joe has in his hand, but... Solid back and forth game here. Brian still has all of his characters. B is gone, so that takes out a considerable amount of... Uh, takes um, out a considerable amount of uh, muscle from um, up under Joe. So we're going to flip Swoop this turn. Swoop is stronger in this mode. He flips in this mode and he's just a 5-10-0 now. So it's zero defense, but the next attack that would attack Swoop anywhere, he'll probably die anyway. So he's going to play the Callous Leadership. I think, I'm not sure if Swoop has more than five damage on it, but Callous Leadership says you can move up to five damage from your eight star or higher leader onto another character so he can move four and then leave the swoop at nine because the swoop is going to die anyway so it's definitely a great value play and the swoop's going to attack and that was going to actually a nice flip for a for, well I, i'll say for a mixed deck it's not a heavy blue deck so seven into the uh prowl but joe flips two blues on defense you don't see that every day in cars so it probably takes three versus the five And Shockwave is kind of wide open. No secret action set or anything like that. So Joe could potentially KO Shockwave right here, which will really cripple uh, Brian and his, uh, you know, his deck's plan. So another grenade launcher, an all-out attack. Oh yeah, jeez, that's uh. And then he flips uh, Cliff Jumper as well for turn. Cliff Jumper is gonna get that plus one attack due to uh, B being in car mode. And we're going to have Prowl attack into Shockwave, I'm sure, for 10 attack. Brian flips two oranges, so that's not helping at all. 
Shockwave is going to take eight, and that's probably a KO. As cool as this deck is, it doesn't defend well, it seems like, unfortunately. And then, like, again, so I, it seems like Cars is just definitely a bad matchup. An unfavorable matchup, rather, for Shockwave, it seems like. At first glance, you know, I'm, I could be wrong, but looking at it right now, it's like, okay, now Joe's just cheating. He flips a press the advantage <laughs> off the anticipation engine. <laughs> That's me, Joe, why are you cheating, bro? For real? Seriously? Flips a press the advantage off of the anticipation engine. Card says, you flip the top card of your deck. If it's an action, you may play it. He played press the advantage. Shockwave's out of there. Simple as that. Now, Brian does get two attacks on Joe's characters, but the Cliff Jumper's at full health. Prowl only has three damage on it. He could potentially actually survive both attacks. Skydive won't do more than one unless he, you know, despite or not counting the oranges, potential oranges that Brian could flip. Swoop could probably definitely deal three, but I think the Prowl will actually still live. So, Brian's in a very tough position here right now. He does have the potential to flip Skydive and attack with it and heal for one, but probably won't do it. Not ideal. I do take all avenues when I look at, you know, all my characters and all my plays. Like, what are all my possible plays? And then eliminate the bad ones. So, that is a play. One shot stand, one shot fall. I guess if he uses that on Prowl, he could potentially kill Prowl. Yeah, three damage. Unless Joe flips a blue. If Joe flips a blue, then he's fine. So, three damage from the swoop and one damage from the skydive will... Well, I'll take that back. The swoop can kill the Prowl on its own if he doesn't... Oh, oh. Okay. So that will kill the Prowl. And he's going to grab another press the advantage. Oh, man, I can't wait to wait for it. We, we need some help. This has to kind of need some help. Every time I see that card now. I mean, I love press the advantage as soon as it came out. I've always loved it. I was like, oh, man, this card's great. Decepticons are ruined. <laughs> They're tight. And then now everybody realizes it, and the card's just ridiculous. More ridiculous than it already was. But Brian's going to flip two more cards. No extra help from his flips, though. So he's going to... Take a fat one damage to Cliff Jumper, and in this situation, Joe. Yep, and he realizes it. Yeah, he flips another card is um, Scrap Pile. So now Cliff Jumper's at a base seven attack. Got Bash and Shield to get rid of the sturdy armor. So extra defense to help out. We're gonna play Confidence. He gets to draw two cards and potentially play another action. Ready for action? Card's not good late game. Well, any of the untap effects aren't usually a. Uh, good late game which he yep, gets rid of both and he's able to play another action he plays all out attacks I guess sure doesn't really matter so we're gonna have cliff jumper attack we're gonna play anticipation engine he misses flipping a turbo booster and uh, looks like he's attacking into swoop yep now it's skydive versus a cliff jumper with three defense and Brian's top decking not something you usually see from shockwave but I guess it does happen. We got Scrounge, see if he can get lucky, hit an upgrade. He does, oh, well, okay, sure, yeah, yeah. Imagine if Cliff Jumper had like one health left and he topped that neck grenade, that'd be sick. So we got seven attack, eight attack going into Cliff Jumper, it takes four. Cliff Jumper will be at five damage, or have five damage on it now. And looks like we're gonna hit the final blow, Leap of Faith. He's gonna play the rollout, sure, why not? Hit another card, Turbo Booster. Yeah, oh, that actually worked out. Jeez. Joe's a real cheater. Joe, why are you a cheater, man? So, and there's the handshake. All right. Well. <laughs> so, me personally, I'm not even going to front. I wouldn't have played that rollout, but the rollout literally just worked out for the best for Joe. He flipped the Cliff Jumper back to alt mode, and then, lo and behold, the next... A uh, card off the leap of faith was Turbo Booster, and Turbo Booster you could only play on a car, which now the Cliff Jumper was. And then he just flipped back, so now the Cliff Jumper has the seven base attack with two cards in the scrap pile, plus the one from Turbo Booster, and yeah, just definitely more than enough to KO the Skydive, and that'll do it. So shout out to Joe and Wreck and Rule, the winner of the comic book stores, Glassboro, or excuse me, Glassboro, New Jersey comic book stores 
in the giant invitational qualifier 31 players the biggest to date that we've had over here on the east coast uh shout out to everybody that came to the tournament shout out to the entire top eight and um yeah shout out to the you know comic book store themselves for running the tournament and that's gonna do it now i do have one uh, special match just an exhibition match between me and someone that i just won't mention you know be a, a surprise and i will post that video uh monday so be looking forward to that just me and someone having some fun and i have a couple more exhibition matches to post and probably some other random videos of me just ranting about some things like i do want to make a video solely about why i hate insecticons and it's not for a reason that you guys may think well okay yes it probably is but it's more in depth and it's more than just the dex helmet but i'll explain that in a video coming up soon and you can get my take on it and some other random thoughts that i have and that's really gonna do it so leading into the weekend, I hope you guys enjoyed this match. This match, I hope you guys enjoyed the series of you know uh, matches that I had and a couple of deck profiles. As we proceed, it's like as we, uh, yeah, well, as we proceed into you know the future and with wave four spoilers coming. Uh, shout out to that battle master that turns into armor. Did I not just say about that? I was hoping that we get one. Uh, you know, in my last video, I was hoping that we get battle masters that turn into utilities armor so and we're, we just got one so nice reveal um, i'm very excited for wave four and uh yeah as we get into you know the end of the spoiler season or excuse me the end of uh qualifier season good luck to everyone that still has not qualified uh, just keep testing if like i said if you have friends to test with you know do it up and take advantage of it and lead into the weekend you guys have a great weekend and um yeah enjoy this video series enjoy the other content that all the other content creators are putting out you know i'm very excited for the future of this game all right guys with that i'm gonna head out you guys have a great weekend and day or night whenever you're catching this video this is s dot akuma heading out peace psych not peace not just yet forgot my uh quick post-match analysis so uh, just kind of how i talked about throughout the match Brian, the Shockwave player, needed a security checkpoint ASAP to get rid of at least all the upgrades to kind of give, uh, potentially give Joe a one-sided, give Joe one-sided plays throughout the game. Uh, but he never saw a security checkpoint, and um, that's because he's not playing it. So <laughs> that really put a hindrance on his deck, you know. Uh, but I was just, just saying in general, you know, uh, checkpoint will be a card that would keep his hand in check, you know, pun intended. And, uh, you know, definitely slow Joe down. So that's just unfortunate. You know, his Shockwave deck wasn't able to set up faster than the card deck was just, you know, coming at him with the Presti advantages, with the untap effects, with the lucky flips off of Anticipation Engine, you know, and so on and so forth. So, and then, like, just the natural counter of Shockwave is things, decks that draw cards, you know. So uh, I've talked about side decking, you know, work overtime and system reboot, but the cards that kind of doesn't need it, especially because Joe has two cards. Like my fire B deck plays fire drive, which does draw a card, but only once. And then, you know, yeah. So with prowl and B drawing cards is just too much for shockwave to handle. So it's unfortunate for Brian, but good job to him and congratulations on his qualification. So either way, he definitely got there that weekend and okay. Now I'm gonna head out. You guys have a great weekend and or a great day, a great night. This is S. Akuma heading out. Peace.